In this tutorial, we're going to look at um, using the NCLOS system to create this dynamic cable. So, what we have, the playback's going to lag a bit because of the screen capture. Um, dynamics are just catching up as well. In fact, let's just go in. Um, Okay, so this is what we have. So the cable is all um, dyna dynamically animated. Uh, only the jack plug is animated. So this is just following along and linking into this wall socket. Let's rewind this. And uh, let's have a look at this. So I'm just going to grab this and just delete it. Uh, what I'm going to start off doing um, is just going to go here and with curves, I'm just going to um, use my CV curve tool and create Give myself a bit more cable on this. I'm um, not really worrying about where any of the lines are going right now. And press enter. Okay, I'm just going to go in here and uh, get these control verts. Bring these up more. So they're central to where this cable's going to go in. I have no fixed point really on this, but I'm just going to put this more to the center. Okay. So I already have a circle in here. Is this one here? Let's just go into object mode on this. Um, I'm just going to switch off my surfaces. So let's grab the path. Um, sorry, the circle of the path. I'm going to go into my surfaces. And extrude that. <coughs> And I'm just going to go into my channel box on this fixed path. I'm just going to set this to on one to fix this completely into the path. And otherwise, I think everything else looks fine. Okay. So the next thing we need to do uh, to make this work with the end cloth system, I just uh, select. Oh, I've got my surfaces clicked off, just like this. Okay. Um, if I just go into my end cloth here, I get this warning: uh, no mesh selected for cloth creation. So it doesn't accept nerves. So we just need to go in here and convert this into a poly object. We go modify, uh, convert nerves to polygons. Uh, just leave it at its. Let's just reset this. Leave it as default settings and supply. What I'm going to do is just um, Z that. I'm going to just set mine at my control points. Uh, so that each of the control points on this circle is actually getting some polys. Uh, 
that's better. Uh, we're going to smooth this. Pressing three, going into a smoother mode. What right, that'll do for now. Just close this down. Uh, what I want to do with this is delete the history on it. So edit delete by type history. Uh, finally, uh, let's just give this a name. I'm going to grab this one underneath, so I'm just going to go into my uh, outliner. Cable, um, my curve for this, which I'm going to delete. Don't need that. Uh, I've got the extruded surface as well, uh, which I don't really need for that as well. And let's just close this down. So now what we can do is go into this um, and we can add, uh, create an end cloth from this. So let's click on this icon. I'm in my end cloth tab here. Uh, let's go into our end dynamics actually as well. So, uh, where are we? I'll uh, create end cloth here as well. The, um, so everything is this in this menu as well. So I'm just going to go in, create a cloth out of this. And uh, to simulate this, we can just, on our timeline, I'm just going to make sure that we have our animation preferences set to play every frame. Okay. And then I'm going to grab this and press play. You see, it just curls up and falls on the floor. So there's a few things being added to this scene. Uh, one of those being, let's just go in um, to my outliner again. We have these nucleus. Um, but I don't need these dynamic constraints. Don't need the end widget. Just get rid of that. Um, so this nucleus here. Just going to go into the attribute editor for this. The nucleus is the uh, kind of overriding properties for the scene. So it controls the gravity um, uh, and even things like the ground uh, plane. So right now this is off by default. Use plane. Play this and it's just going to carry on forever. Uh, we could set up a collision object there as well. Or we can just go in and use this plane, which is just on the origin. And then just grab that. We can also start linking these in. So I'm just going to go into this object. I'm just going to right click and go into vertices selection and grab some of the verts. And I'm going to shift select the um, the handle of this object. Grab that. Just in our menu, I'm going to use this uh, collision object to constrain to. Now you see that follows along. Obviously, we've not got the other side linked yet. I'll just right click, go in on this, and do exactly the same thing. That's going to right click, uh, select vertex, grab these vertices points, then shift click, 
on our constraint object. And then we can just add a constraint. Okay, so I don't like the way this is um, folding in. It looks far too loose to be something like a cable. So let's go and start looking at the properties for this. Um, the stretch resistance and compression, uh, compression resistance, two things that I want to take up straight away. Um, I don't want it to bounce around as much. Uh, let's just take these both to 50 for now. So the motion of that is a little bit better. But it's still got this um, effect of folding in on itself. Um, so let's just go down and look at the rigidity. Uh, we only need a, quite a small value in here. I'm going to set it to about 0.4. That's maybe a little too much. Resistance up, my compression resistance. Oops, turn my rigidity off for a second. And doing all this real time, um, while this is playing around and looping around, we can actually set these properties. Okay, that's keeping its shape a little better. I'm going to think that there's an electrical cable running through this. It isn't just the surrounding area. So it looks a little stiffer, um, especially at this kind of length. Um, Yeah, just all a question of playing. I'm going to give this a bit more mass as well. Um, Okay, that's kind of getting them to come out now. I want quite a stiff cable here. Um,
Okay. Um, so, just linking in using the collision objects, uh, creating a cloth, just stiffening this up, just playing around with the dynamic properties. Um, so this is still being simulated, so this is a real-time simulation. If we actually use this in our animation, what we're going to do is uh, bake this animation down. So the way that we can do that is to grab this, uh, we can go to our end cache, it's going to create a new uh, end cache, it's going to replace existing, and this will just go through and cache this animation. So it's now baked in. Uh, we can go back and just uh, go into our animation pre uh, properties. Let's change our playback back to real time. And there you go. Um, if we want to get rid of that and go back to the dynamic simulation, I can actually go in uh, to our end cache and create a new cache from this. Uh, sorry, delete cache. Uh, and another useful thing within this is being able to grab a beginning state. So if you wanted this cable to drop down first um, and give a, a bit more flex on the, a, a bit more kind of grouping on the floor, you could allow it to do that and then start off with a certain pose. So if I wanted to start off with this flex this way, Next, go in on the end solver and set the initial state set from current. Uh, if I just do that, you'll see that that. Or if it was, just go in to our end solver, uh, to our end cache and delete cache. And because I set that current state, um, you can see that's now offset. Let's just undo a couple of times, bring that back. Okay. Uh, quite useful for just end cloth objects if you pin a table cloth over a table. You can let it do its dynamic simulation so it rests on the table and then set that as an initial state for the rest of the animation. So that's a very quick look just at creating a cable using end cloth.